It was a year ago today that the World Health Organization officially declared COVID-19 as a pandemic. And obviously there was so much uncertainty if you go back 12 months. But one thing we have seen in these last few months, given all the unprecedented action to assist the economy during this period of unknowns, is the start of an economic recovery. A great example of that would be in the auto parts sector. We just got numbers from Linamar, which overall saw its sales rise 5% year over year in the latest quarter. They have hiked their dividend. Linda Hassenpratz is the CEO of Linamar and joins us this morning. Linda, thanks as always for joining us on BNM Bloomberg. I mean, if you had to characterize the state of the business here in March 2021, um, what would you say? Yeah, I would say we're in full recovery mode. I mean, uh, certainly our different businesses recovered at different rates last year. I mean, auto already right out of the global shutdowns, you know, really started to recover quickly. Uh, our ag business was having a bit of a slow year uh, regardless, but really started to pick up steam near the end of the year. And our access business was the last to recover, but we are seeing recovery there as well. So, you know, when I look across all three of those markets for 2021, we're seeing double-digit growth uh, in uh, in those core markets, so that bodes well for uh, a solid year of recovery for us in 2021. I remember um, at, at that period of great unknowns a year ago when I was talking to business leaders about you know what you got to be mindful of. Uh, a lot of people would talk about cash flow, and certainly in this quarter. We saw some very significant cash flow for your business, but we mentioned in our newscast there have been other things like cost reductions and, and just being conservative with your cash. So, I mean, how much of it is just playing things uh, on the prudent side and then how much of it is actual real growth that you're seeing day in, day out? Oh, absolutely. There's real growth that we're seeing. I mean, we, we have uh, a significant business book of business that we are launching uh, specifically in, in our automotive business, but we also have new products launching uh, at Skyjack and at MacDon. So there's real growth coming from that. Uh, of course, at the same time, we did uh, really uh, focus in on cost reduction last year, obviously on cash conservation as well. You're right, you really need to conserve cash. Uh, obviously focusing strongly as well on our people and making sure they were safe and getting them back to work as soon as uh, we could. Uh, so, you know, it's a, it, it, it needs to be a balance uh, of how you manage those kind of uh, those kind of crisis situations. But it is great to see that there's real underlying growth that coupled with the, the cost and cash and people management is resulting in some pretty fantastic results for us. You also took advantage of the wage subsidy, and, and that clearly helped this quarter. But I, I, mean, I guess talk to us about how important of a lifeline that was for you as we're you know, one year away from uh, when it was officially declared a pandemic. And with that recovery in sales, how much longer you anticipate uh, needing to take advantage of that program? Yeah, the, the wage subsidy program and, and other similar programs that we tapped into around the world in terms of government support, uh, we're clearly focused on our people, right? Our ability to therefore bring more people back to work, back to fully paid work, a lot faster than they would have otherwise, uh, than we would have otherwise been able to. Uh, so to me, that was the, the clear win uh, out of tapping into the, the subsidy programs is being able to bring all those folks back, get them back to, to fully paid work, get help from the government in, in uh, paying for that. Uh, that was absolutely key. Uh, so I, I think that the, the program really delivered in that sense that it was meant to help get people back to work and it did get people help back to work. And how much longer do you anticipate needing to take advantage of that? Yeah, I mean, clearly, as uh, as our various businesses continue to recover and we continue to bring people back uh, to work, we will need less and less of the subsidy. I mean, you saw that it was dramatically less uh, in Q4 than it was in Q3, and, and Q1 will be a lot less again. I mean, it's all completely tied to how you're performing in comparison to prior year. And as we continue to recover, uh, the need for that subsidy uh, absolutely declines. 
Um, we should point out, Linda, um, you were a member of Ontario's COVID vaccination distribution tax force, uh, task force. You did resign because of a trip to the Barbados. Um, I, I would, I, I'm just curious to know sort of your takeaways, because obviously there's been a lot of spotlight, whether it's business leaders or politicians, on their travel during the pandemic. Maybe you can just shed a little bit of light on your decision there. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's absolutely nothing to justify there. It was a bad decision, uh, and uh, I I truly regret it. Uh, it is a good lesson for me in uh, the importance of really, you know, weighing the consequences of your decisions and what it what it means. And I didn't do a good job of that, and I really regret having made that decision and the disrespect that it showed for healthcare workers who've been putting their lives on the line all year. So. Yeah, it was a bad decision, so there's no justifying it. You know, the other uh, big subject that we were curious about uh, from where you sit, there's been so much conversation around technology companies and a continued push into the auto sector. Everybody curious about Apple's plans. Can you just give us an update on your own interest as a business in aligning yourselves with any Silicon Valley player that is looking to be a, a, a contributor to the future of the automobile industry? Yeah, I think it's, it's an exciting new growth area for us, frankly. We have absolutely one business with several of the new entrants into, uh, into the automotive field. Folks are bringing exciting new ideas to the table, both in terms of technology of how the vehicle is powered, obviously electric, uh, vehicles, battery electric, fuel cell electric vehicles, which we feel is uh, really the right, you know, the right solution for the future, but also just in terms of mobility and how it's going to work. So we've been pretty excited to uh, to connect with these companies. I think that they're they're uh, enjoying the opportunity to connect uh, with a seasoned supplier in the industry as well and bring our technology ideas to the table. So it's it's a great new. Uh, avenue for growth. We've absolutely uh, embraced it and are working closely with uh, with these new entrants, even as we work closely with our existing customers as they transition their own business into uh, into new technologies. Care to name names on these new entrants and whether Apple is one of them? <laughs> well, hopefully we'll be able to soon, but uh, where we are uh, unfortunately restricted from naming names uh, at this point in time, but hoping to be able to do that in the coming months. All right, uh, I had to try. Uh, I'd love to ask you just a big picture, big picture question. One of the wild card debates right now is about inflation and whether it's going to rear its head and whether that's going to be temporary. From where you sit, you've got a lot of inflationary pressures that you're dealing with, whether it's from aluminum prices, whether it's from uh, the chip shortage that could potentially uh, affect your own supply chain. How do you think about that for the average Canadian? Do you think prices for you are prices increasing? Are they going to increase? And, and is that temporary? Yeah, we, I mean, we are seeing some, uh, some pressure on the pricing side on commodity prices, steel prices, uh, as an example, certainly there are supply chain issues uh, in uh, out there that our, our customers are grappling with, which obviously affects us as well if there's a uh, trickle down impact to volume. So the chip uh, shortage that you mentioned is a perfect example. There's cl clearly going to be an impact uh, in, uh, in the first quarter. Uh, the forecast for global impact to vehicle production is a little over a million units uh, hit to Q1, that's at a 20 million-ish units that were that are, are forecast. So, you know, it's a meaningful decline, but the good news is it looks like it's going to be made up for later in the year. So actually the overall forecast mm -hmm. for volume for this year has actually increased uh, globally over what was uh, forecast uh, previously. But on the pricing side, for sure, it's something we're keeping uh, an eye on. Uh, and uh, and need to to work to to manage as best we can. Some of these supply chain issues will be short term as we work through a bit of a surge uh, in uh, in demand and appropriate uh, reactions in terms of uh, capacity getting put put uh, in place. But it's definitely something we're we're keeping an eye on. Linda, thank you so much as always for joining us. That's Linda Hassan-Fraz, the CEO of Linamar.